One other thing we can make is this black market. So I'm thinking that might be a good thing to do. It's very cheap compared to what we do have, which is a ridiculous amount of these, a ridiculous amount of this, and a ludicrous amount of chromatic iron. Oh, I already pulled it out. So, this could, there's a small chance, basically, that this could help us with our quest for um, carbon. Well, I don't like this. Put it there. Ah, alas, it cannot. There's a chance that this could have um, had carbon in it. It, doesn't, it resets 24 hours after you last did something. Now, in fairness, we do have a bunch of this. So it's possible that we could buy... Do I want this? I guess so. This and reset it. <laughs> a, a level zeros. Okay, you don't know what it is. It could be anything. Uh, it's cheap. It's cheap. <laughs> now, I don't want to buy that. But look, this goes to twenty four hours every time we do that. I'm. Ooh, that's actually really good. Sure. We've used them all, okay. That was actually <laughs> none left. Fine. Um, well, it was worth a try. All right, let's have a look at this villager bloke then. So I've looked at the mechanics of vanilla villagers, and what's going to happen is he's going to tend to the crops. He's going to turn excess seeds into bone meal, and he's going to use the bone meal, so that's pretty good. But what he's not going to do is put the crops into the chest. There's two things he'll do with crops. First of all, he'll keep hold of them. When that inventory is full, he'll either drop them on the ground, or he's going to try and chuck them to a villager that doesn't have enough food. So there's two ways, then, of getting the crops from the ground into a chest. One of them is to have a villager with not enough food, and get this farmer bloke to throw the food at the villager and miss. Land on a hopper, collect the food. The other way is to just let him drop them on the ground, and have a sort of minecart hopper underneath. Say so sort of have a minecart hopper underneath that will pick up anything that is on the ground, drop it into a chest. I'm going to do that one. And that's... It seems like a good build. Let's make that go.
recording it all again because I didn't do the microphone. So, that was a bit of a palaver. I screwed this up because I accidentally put a unpowered rail down, which will halt the Minecraft. They break on unpowered rails, I realise. So I did that a little bit wrong. If we have a look at this, this contraption here, what's happening is if this hopper gains any items, then it will output a redstone signal. Well, the comparator will output a redstone signal. It will tell you there's something in the hopper. Whilst that's on, this torch is off, this is not powered, this is not powered, this is not powered, and this is not powered, which, as mentioned, will break the Minecraft. Not break in, in the Minecraft, Minecart. Not break in the smash sense, but in the halt sense. It'll put the brakes on. So while there is stuff in the hopper, this is unpowered, and the Minecart will stay there. So when the minecart's empty, it's going to be emptying at the same speed as this. So there's going to be a little bit of a delay. Very minor delay, at which point once it's empty, yeet, it's off again. So it's going to run around and collect all this stuff. Uh, stop at the end when it's got something in it. Wait for it to be emptied. And come back. Now, this joker over here, I looked it up, and he's got eight internal inventory slots. So what he's been doing, he's been tending the crops, as you do. You're very slow, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you can have more than one doing it at the same time, possibly. But eight internal inventory slots, two of them are going to be full of seeds, maybe. Because I, get, I think they are using the right-click equivalent, right, where you can just poke it with the right mouse button and pick the crops without having to replant them, without needing the seeds. So you never need more seeds. So he's going to be putting seeds he doesn't need into here. So let's say even then he's got two types of seeds in his inventory, that's two slots. He's going to be picking up bone meal from here, that's three slots. That's five slots left to fill up with five stacks of this stuff before he'll start dropping them on the ground. Which is a lot. Too much. I've noticed he's not actually, he can climb out, but he's not. <laughs> I don't know why he's not, but I'm going to consider myself lucky about that one. Um, maybe he stays close to the farm and doesn't feel the need to run away. Anyway, it's going to be a while before food drops from here. Now, this is one of two ways of doing it. The minecart way, first of all, relies on his inventory being full and therefore dropping on the ground and the minecart goes back and forth. But look, this is one, two, three layers for the farm itself. One, two, and then a third layer. This is necessary because underneath these there's redstone torches on this layer. So three layers for the cart. That doesn't scale very well vertically. Whereas if you had... Whoa! <laughs> whereas if you had a villager... Oh, you can recover. If you had a villager... Zombie. Hello. Um, over there, like for him to throw the food at. You don't need a minecart. He'll just throw the food. It'll land on a hopper. The hopper will catch it, and he'll throw more food. Easy. So the only difference between those two, apart from the ease of vertical scalability, you need way more villagers for that one to work. You need two per farm rather than one. But also, um, it's shorter you can stack more in a shorter space but the key difference that you might not realize is that if you're doing that for wheat farming this farmer will craft bread and throw bread at the other villager whereas if you're doing it the minecart way the farmer will drop wheat and you'll get wheat in your chest so if you want to farm wheat this way you have to do it the minecart way or some way of getting it picked up and dropped into a chest which you could use a mod for but you haven't got any mods unlocked yet so that's the vanilla way of doing that over here, oh crap, <laughs> over here, this place is nearly ready, this place is basically ready, I'm going to patch it up um, with wood, I'm going to make it look like the thing's been sort of reused ruins, right, I like the ruins effect, and I like the way the trowel, which it places randomly tiles from your hotbar when you right click, um, and if you use the right palette, which I don't think I've done here, I might take the vault cobblestone out and replace it with something else. It's too high contrast. Um, and the same here with the smooth stone. It just doesn't suit. Like You can imagine that some of these original bricks or original pillars have been broken into these textures, but they can't break into this texture. It doesn't work. Anyway, I like doing this sort of tumble down effect. And I can patch it up with wooden fences, basically, in order to pen people in. Um, and this is where the villager trading hall is going to be. So what you do is you make individual cub cubicles for the villagers to stand in. You put down the appropriate um, job block, like a, a, for a farmer, it's the composter. For a, for a librarian, I think, it's the lectern. So that you can trade with them. So 
I've still got my breeding program going on over here, and I've just fed these ones, so there's a baby. They're sleeping, but it's not changing, so that's very fair. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. So what I'm going to work on next is we're going to start building up in here so that we've got space for all of our new villagers to learn new tasks. Um, and then we can start trading with them, selling them stuff and buying them stuff. And we're going to have to scale this farm up, I think, in order to get more out of it. Um, and... <laughs> Basically, we need a lot of villagers and we can only have one at a time with this setup. Put down more beds, we can probably make more villagers, but it, it doesn't scale very well. So... Stay tuned, we'll be building maybe another farm. We'll be building this place up a little bit better, trying to finish it off. I haven't finished the tops of these because I couldn't be bothered making all the decorative blocks required to do so. Um, and we'll be running another vault at some point. This has left me room for 14 villagers. Each one of these is going to be their, you know, their, the work pedestal, the thing that tells them what to do. And then behind it is going to be where the villager stands. There's room for 14, but I can expand this. That's the whole point, right? I can make more of this temple. But for now, 14. That's more than I've got villagers, but it's not really going to be enough to get a good selection of books, which is kind of really why I want this. Because I'm going to need... I probably will need uh, enough villagers that will buy things from me in order to get a supply of emeralds, although I can get a lot of emeralds from raw vaults and, and real vaults. Um, it's nice to have a way of selling my excess farm crops. So I guess we'll see how it works out, but we may end up needing to expand, but I think this is a good start. Silk touch on the first try. You can stay. That's only 11 emeralds. And he's stuck. Looks alright, doesn't it? Let's make more villages. Silk touch and efficiency 4. So the efficiency 5 that was here immediately magically <laughs> cycled itself whilst I was getting enough money to pay for it. Alas, you are still cyclable and you've had mending since forever, so I don't know why you two have chosen to keep your trades and this one, which I really, really wanted to keep, cycled itself out. But here we are. Two efficiency fours is an efficiency five, so for the next vault, well, okay, look. They're expensive. And in our... Here, here, here. This is going to die soon. <laughs> very soon. Probably worth making a new one. But we can put Efficiency 5 on this and Silk Touch now that we've got villagers that can create. So that's worked really well, basically, is what I'm saying. I'm happy with that. Uh, we've got what we needed from that endeavour, which is literally just those two things. we got Silk Touch and we got efficiency, I wanted efficiency 5, efficiency 4 is fine. Mending is kind of useful, it will keep our elytra alive, but we need an XP farm to do that, and we don't have an XP farm. So the best way of fixing the elytra then is to keep trading with villagers, so we're going to need a lot more villagers to sell stuff to, and that will get me uh, a supply of emeralds, 
and XP, but it's not the ideal one. There are better ways of doing XP, one of which is to kill mobs, of course. But I don't want to take my Elytra into the vault just to fix it, because I'd have to have it either on my back or in my offhand, and it would you know, it would be a disadvantage. So we need a, an overworld way of getting XP in order to make mending worthwhile, but it's, it's there, and it hasn't cycled out. You know what? I'm going to buy one to make sure that it doesn't cycle out. So give me your mending. It's 32. It's not... Excuse me, I thought I had a lot more than that. I don't have enough, so uh, I won't be doing that. This is why you need to you know, sell to the villagers as well, because... Because we don't have any more emeralds. I've spent them all. The trays weren't cheap, but they showed up and I was glad for it. So I took them. So to make another cutter, we either need um, axing on a pick or picking on an axe. These are fine. Do you know what? We might as well just use the biggest one that we've got at this stage, which is the uh, 38 size picking. So we'll put picking on an axe. Whoa, just some of this, some of this, probably this, and driftwood, of course. And we're still working towards our uh, last piece of carbon. Give me what we can do here. Ooh, what do you? Oh, that was expensive. <laughs> I thought that was a brand new anvil, but apparently not. Um, we can use our two efficiencies. Of course, you need the um, vanilla XP to do this as well, but that's right. So we can put efficiency four, and then I believe if you just do this, this is efficiency five. There we go. It costs a lot of levels, but job done. That is an efficiency five. I remembered, because I looked at it, we already took a level in haste. So one level of haste plus efficiency five should be enough to comfortably break a spawner before it's likely to spawn again. So let's le let's learn either. We're only at level one dash. It's kind of okay. Bane miners kind of okay. Heal is going to become important soon. I think we take strength, uh, as you can tell, because I took it. Um, and we need another village to provide us unbreaking. That much is true as well. I think we can afford to do a vault and then uh, call it the end of the episode. How does that sound? We need 10. 10 more of these. And that should be our first knowledge point. Brilliant. Everyone's favourite is a creeper vault, of course. I keep trying to fly with my elytra. It's not on. This is a real vault. Monoliths. We're looking for vault meat. Look how fast that is. Oh, I didn't put silk touch on it. That's alright. At this point, that doesn't really matter. I don't have enough. You want Silk Touch so that you can um, use your fortune pick on gems, but I don't have one. I do have a fortune book, but that was a, that was luck. You know, uh, I don't think I have a vendor that can give me them. So at this point, I'm not too worried about it. And we found an elite. I hope I recorded it. So that's going to give us even more XP. We're basically probably going to hit... We might be halfway to level 11 by now. Claim. Halfway to 11. I was right. Let's put this stuff away. I was not wearing my elytra. Alright, best bit. 
So this one we got from the vault, actually. It's a 19 size ornate affinity. I don't know if I explained the affinities. I think I have. I'll do it again. A pool with an affinity on it can break the chest type. That uh, It's an affinity for. There's also coin piles. I've got gilded chests, living chests, wooden chests, and now an ornate chest. It's also 19 size. So whatever I put that on is going to be... You know, it's going to have a lot of capacity left, which is brilliant. There's a question that I have, and I'm going to look at the answer... Uh, or find out for myself. I don't know if it has to have picking on it as well, or if any tool can break an ornate chest with ornate affinity. So we'll find out. Um, and I mentioned this because I think I've mentioned this other bit before. If I have a shovel with coin affinity on it, then coins are usually found on logs and stone, rarely on sand. So if it's a shovel, it's not going to break easily the thing behind it. Which means I won't get so much junk in my inventory. What else have we got? Hammer size at 54. Item rarity, item rarity. Gilded affinity at 31. That's all right, isn't it? And then item rarity at 41. So item rarity, because of the small percentage, I think you have to have a really small one to make it worth anything. There's also item quantity. And again, you know, I think 25 is probably my personal maximum for that. Um, and then a picking at so we could use the picking. We've only got one and it's 18. It being less than 50 size, I think it's worth it to have a, a dual tool. And I'm going to put um, my... Uh, what have we got? We have got um, fortune, actually. We've got mending, we've got fortune. We can build some fortune. Actually got quite a lot. We've got unbreaking as well. So we can put some unbreaking on it. I haven't got a villager that's doing that yet, but we can put some on to just make it last a little bit longer. Um, and then, of course, there's the bounty table. So the way you do this, you claim the reward. Boop, we've got that. And now we have in our inventory a bounty box. It's the same. Put it down, shift right click, get all this stuff. Let's, let's roll these. Meanwhile, open these. Ooh. We've got a Twitch team there. Hooray! These are just living in here for now. Because <laughs> because they are. Richard T. Dragon. We should leave more space than this. But look, I've got two of the same one. We got that last time. Or maybe this time. I don't remember. Now, my leggings. This could be much... These are much better, actually. Less armour. Same amount of health and increased damage. And I like increased damage. I do have an empty suffix. And I'm not sure that can be armour. But it might be able to be. So we've got plenty of leggings. <laughs> ready to ready to go. But let's see if we can um, make our... Did I just get another jewel? No, I didn't. Let's see if we can make our um, book recycler. Uh, by buying this, by the way, it forces this never to change um, profession, and it'll never re-roll these. In fact, the button's gone away. I can't re-roll these now. I have to make another one if I want something different. So I've got mending... I'm going to put mending on my elytra, and it occurred to me there's a good way of getting the experience, which is from... Because oh, I dive. <laughs> Fine. Um, the bottle of enchanting. I need two levels to do this. Mending. Unbreaking on you. First level is going to need four. I want to put it on again. I'm breaking two, and then this I'm breaking one. It's still two, okay. But I don't know why it cost me seventeen to do it. But can you then combine these? Yes. So now I have an unbreaking two book. So if I got two already and I put two on it, I should get three. Yes, and it's going to cost me nineteen levels to do that. Surely it doesn't cost me 19 levels to put Unbreaking 4 or 3 on a tool in the first place. I don't think it does. I've got a shield. Where did that come from? 8%, 5%. It's, it's really bad. <laughs> it's just not good. Awesome. So now we can get doing things that we've been trying to be doing. Trying to be doing English hard all this time. So we're going to do that. We've got 8 of these. The recipe, for the, the uses for this, by the way, are several, but we want this one, which is a knowledge core, which is vault diamonds and an extraordinary benio type, which is interesting. I thought it was very nice, but that's fine. Some benny in here already. 
We're going to have to... Maybe this is a good time to use our... Oh, I haven't got any levels. We're going to have to use our fortune. Right? But we've only got fortune one. We've got it a couple of times. We haven't got enough XP to... One level. <laughs> That's not enough to do anything. Let's do this. That's five of those. We wanted a recycler, which is a lava bucket, netherite, vault essence. I actually want a netherite ingot without having to make one. Right? Uh, vault essence. Ta da! So anything that um, you don't want, like this. You know, shove it in a recycler and it will turn it into something that you can use to then you know, make more, I guess. It depends on what it is that you recycle as to what you get out of it. So the problem with Benny's here, we've only got 15 of these. Now, without fortune on my pick, on any pick, there's not a great chance that I necessarily get, because that's 15, right? And I need 16 of these. So there's probably an evens chance I actually get enough without fortune. Maybe I can use fortune one. So what's it going to cost me to put fortune two on here? Four levels. I'm not going to put it on here because this one's nearly dead. <laughs> going to break. Twenty-eight. Very good. So we want four of these. One, two, three, four. And one of these. And some bolt diamonds. This, this. Knowledge starts. What you do is, boom. One unspent knowledge point. We've got an unspent skill point as well because we just did level up. Let's have a look in here. Well, I'm going to spend this on heal because I was really struggling just now. Um, but then we do want to save up for some of these. Maybe some speed. That would be good. So I have to say... It's a big decision at this point between um, the. It's a big decision between a storage mod probably draws colossal colossal chests of fun. That's one point. Simple storage network is two points. But that might be. That's kind of nice because you can network your whole base up. But I think we start with either draws or colossal chests first. But I think the thing that I'm struggling with at the moment is looting it vaults. And this is the first thing we unlocked in multiplayer. It's going to be the first thing I unlocked in single player. I can now do pouches. So let's have a look. Pouch. So a pouch. It's another inventory. It's the same size as your current inventory. But there are upgrades for it. It's a magic silk block. It's some vault essence. And it's a bundle which is rabbit hide. And I think I have enough of that. Am I lucky? I have more than enough of that. Uh, let me craft this and we'll see how it works. Ta-da! Right. Pouch. Open pouch. Right click. Simple inventory. It's the same size as your inventory. As mentioned, there's two upgrades slots, and there's only two upgrades that we currently create. Um, because you see these two. This one, double pouches. This one, double pouches. That's the next tier of the pouches research, which is here. Okay. So we can only make the ones I just showed you. We want to create one of each. And the pickup upgrade makes backpack pickup items, as you've noticed, and stack upgrade tier one. It multiplies the number of stats that can fit in a slot by two. So it means that although you've got the same number of slots, which means you can only put three times nine items in here, each one can hold two stacks of items if you put that in, which is great for a lot of the junk that you keep getting. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to craft both of these, which is even more of everything. Oh, chromatic steel. We might have to... Um, come back to this because again that's expensive yeah we haven't got enough of the chromatic steel it's such a shame that's a really difficult thing but look apart from all of that it goes in here and if you press b it opens up so you don't have to keep putting your shulker box down and opening it up you just press b and there it is available to you you still take a shulker box and i'm going to I at least have a pouch now. We're going to have to work towards the upgrades for it. Oh, there's so many things to get. <laughs> and this is a lot of the balance of this mod, right? It's not like a, I'm not complaining. The whole Vault Hunters mod pack is based around you have to keep going back into the vaults. Which is good, because it's fun. So we have a pouch. Nice. Um, the next thing that we've unlocked then 
I don't think it's going to be double tapped, so I think it's going to be a storage mod. And maybe we just save up two and just start with a simple storage network and build enough space to have a lot of chests. Because that seems to be the right way of doing it. If you're going to have a simple storage network, you basically connect all your chests to a network and then you can see what's in it through a, an interface. In fact, let's have a look. There's a request table. There's an inventory access without a crafting grid. Not sure what that means. One per network, so there's a route, there's an interface, blah, 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 right? But the, the price of these things, it's a pog. <laughs> what? Used to request items. So you need a pog to even start. How about that? Pogs are really difficult to get the hang, get a hold of. Um, because a pog is one of each special gem. So you have to find one. And these ores can drop zero gems when you do find them. So they are a little bit rude in that respect. At least we have a fortune pick now. Now that we have a fortune pick, it's probably sensible to buy silk touch. 35. <laughs> okay. Maybe later. This has been a really good episode. I've been recording it all week, but I hopefully have pared it down to a palatable size for you lot. We've made a villager's breeder. We've made a farmer who I'm hoping is going to at some point fill up his inventory and actually start exporting stuff. This might as well be empty. 49. I don't know if that's the correct amount. We'll come back to that and have a look at that and see if we've got any more. Oh, look. He has been picking stuff up. Interesting. Why have you thrown me bone meal? I don't want that. Well, we, okay, we need to figure out how to filter stuff out of this that we don't want. But for now, it's going in. We've got beetroots. I haven't had any potatoes, I think. But it seems to be working. That's good. So we've got the village breeder. We've got the farm, which seems to be working. I spent a lot of AFK time with those trees growing and chopping them down. And we've set up, finally, a few traders that can sell me some enchanting books i just need to figure out the levels thing and to not die remind me when i come out of the vault to switch to my elytra so that if i'm gonna fall off at least i can <laughs> float down um i can make another dude i'll do it off camera and i'll see you in the next episode for more of the shenanigans thank you for watching i've been Alchus. this has been Alchus plays and we are playing vault hunter skyblock check the description below for more information about this mod pack and check the description below for our twitch streams that we've been doing until next time, thank you for watching and I will see you.